Hey guys, Tyler here. Welcome back to The Case of the Golden Idol, a game of murder, mystery, and detective work. Who was murdered and why? So I've got a dude here who's seen better days. Looks like he's not breathing and been stabbed three times with a ruby ring and a walking cane. What else is in his room? It says revenge RR, written in blood, a hatch, a trap door in the ceiling. There's a stool underneath the trap door, which leads me to leave someone possibly got in through the trap door, or this open window with a man shouting out. Alarm, alarm, a break-in. Holding a lantern is Henry Parker, the watchman, who also has a spear. There's also glass laying on the outside, which means that the window was broken from within. There's a toolbox with a ticking watch that says 225. So he was murdered before 225 to Maurice. Is this man Maurice? Could be. Also an empty toolbox. Kind of looks golden idol size. Now I do admit this was in the demo, but I do forget all this. It was like almost a year ago that I played it. On the table, I have a washing bowl filled with slightly but bloody water as though someone washed their hands free of blood. Dear Proud Beast Master, I've attended our departed brother's send-off and accepted the keepsake that he bestowed upon our brotherhood in his will. Keepsake possibly referring to the idol, his will referring to Sebastian, whatever his last name is. Editor, help. <laughs> What's this about a brotherhood, though? I shall send this letter tomorrow, September 10th. I hope it will reach you without delay. Already it is midnight. I will retire to my bed, for this has been a long day. May Griffin awaken, proud beast initiate. So whoever wrote this was in a cult, and the events of this scene happened between midnight and 225. This is likely the man who wrote the letter, because he had the keepsake of the golden idol, but no longer has it. There's another room over here I can investigate. Thankfully my face cam is blocking nothing, but there is a window. The man outside. Why did that bugger give me a note when he knows damn well I can't read? I remember this guy now. He's got a rusty half of shears, a pe piece of stale bread, and a note that says you can lie low for a couple of days in the old oarsman's place down at the docks, which he can't read. I do remember this bit from the demo. This guy is a big red herring. For now, let's focus on the trap door. Just in the ceiling. There's an empty bed, not warm. Someone was sleeping here. And there's a door that does not open. So it's possible some entry through the trap door could have happened. And let me just take a look at this thinking real quick. I'm going to put this as Maurice right now, just as a maybe. And it was in his room. And it was likely that Maurice got stabbed. Let's carry on. Downstairs I go. To a lively scene. Got a good old barkeep. Where did that blasted boy go? I really need a piss. Don't we all? He's got a kitchen knife. A partially peeled lemon. Dear Oscar Boyton, it's come to our attention that the good old owner of the Little Mermaid offers services to those who want to transfer products that are less agreeable to the authorities. I will come by in three days. If you still have some spa er, space in your gin barrels and are willing to earn extra money, reach out to me. So he must be Oscar Boyton? So he might not be the owner, but the barkeep, but he does have keys. So he's probably Oscar Boyton. Very likely. What's this here? There's a tab for green. Four gallons of wine. Probably not gallons. <laughs> That's absurd. I don't know what GL stands for. There's Breege with three and Blair with one GL. He's got a book in front of him. There's two rooms. The Dandelion Room, a Willard Wright who received the idol in the previous uh, mystery, in the previous episode. And Ash Blair is in the forget-me-not room. So here's what I'm going to do real quick. The dandelion room is, in fact, the right one. This is probably Willard right then. And it also makes sense because he has the idol, or had the idol. And Maurice is who he was writing the letter to, which makes way more sense. And Ash Blair is also staring, staying here, but I don't know who that is. Here, we have Robert Redruth, the escaped convict. This is the weird-looking shady guy we saw outside that can't read. Look, his face is even the same. And you may have noticed that this was written in blood. Revenge, RR, Robert Redruth. But he can't read, so he couldn't have write it. So it's a red herring. Uh, this says the door to the street is shut with a latch. You're just going to have to trust me on it. 
here. This is the Little Mermaid's in Amazing Evans musical performance. The event shall commence circa 11 p.m. It is past 11 a p.m., so this is probably Evans. Oh, mother, forgive me. I will never gamble with something so dear to me again. He's got a violin, a folding blade, and a key. A key to where? Well, this is certainly Evans. I've also got this guy. Just deal the next one. It's all luck anyway. Got shillings and pence, a hand of cards, a dagger, a key, and remember you as an agent of our trading company have to reflect its values to the fullest. Never be late. The client leaves the port on the 10th. Be persuasive. Do not take no for an answer. We must get the client's product. Be effective. Once you have the product, deliver it to me immediately with the servant boy. Most importantly, no matter what you do, be mindful of her reputation. Our mains names must remain spotless. The product could possibly refer be referring to the same product in this note, but there's no name attached to it. Now we have this lady. Be Cam John. He was a perfect gentleman. He bought me a drink, then retired upstairs. So someone was talking about the guy upstairs who's now dead. A hand of cards, money, key, and a stiletto. And we got this. To Annie. You are beautiful like a rose, for who you I will take any blows. Annie, you are like a glass of wine, your hair is very fine. I will find gold in a mine if that makes you forever mine. You rhymed mine with mine. You're piglet full of love. Well, this is obviously Annie, and she's talking to John. Tell me, what does that man have that I lack? This is probably John. This starts the conversation. He had a small sword. That's every clue. You got a hand of cards, money, and a key. So this is very likely to be John. But then on the table, I have wine. This is John's wine. This is Annie's wine. This is the third person's wine. And then we have this with score because they're playing cards. Annie G was playing with, ah, Willard Wright and M.E. Probably Maurice Evans. Evans is the only E. So Maurice Evans makes sense. We can actually keep this. Ooh, this is handy. We can do Maurice Evans in this corner and Willard Wright playing here and then Annie what's the G green Annie green makes perfect sense so there's Annie green then there's JB that's definitely John something and then there's AB which is definitely Ash something and this is at the end of the table so this guy is certainly Ash oh wait this is OB we actually know who OB is that is Oscar Boyton so then there's still Breege and Blair for last names I remember Ash Blair was actually the brand of the tobacco that the guy had in the previous mystery. I then also just have a Henry Parker that doesn't correlate to anything, so it's probably the Night Watchman. So Breege has three things of wine and Blair has one. So maybe I could base it off of the amount of time. John's been playing longer than Ash. So this is probably John Breege, who has the three gallons of wine and then Ash Blair with the one. And everything is correct, so I guess I can also complete the names. And all the identities are correct. Now it's just the mystery itself. So someone crept into Willa's room somehow while three people were playing cards with loud music. Well, Annie was always playing cards. And John filled in for Willard, so John was playing cards. Now, I don't know if this was during Oscar's cards or Ash's. And it also happened while loud music was playing, so it couldn't have been Maurice. Actually, who does that even leave for killing Willard? Couldn't have been John, couldn't have been Annie. Couldn't have been Maurice, because he was playing music. So it's either Oscar, Ash, Henry, or Robert. But it can't be Robert, because I know he's the red herring. Henry is the night watchman. It would have been a hell of a stunt for him to get in there, then escape, and then alert the people. So it's probably either Ash or Oscar. Ash makes the most sense. It looks like he's just trying to do his job. Where did that blasted boy go? I really need a piss. Blasted boy? Well, Ash Blair was in the other room. And if we think that actually he came through the ceiling, that would make a lot of sense. In fact, his coat's here. Oh, but look, the client leaves the port on the 10th. Willard Wright was also talking about leaving on the 10th, right? About sending the letter on the 10th. He doesn't have any gold knight on him, but he has the best motive. So I'm willing to bet that Ash Blair crept in his room through the trap door. And during that time, Oscar was playing cards with loud music. And also that kind of lines up with the timing of everything. And now he has a dagger, so that's the last thing I fill in. 
And the scroll has been fulfilled. A man going by the name of Ash Blair crept into Willow's room through the trapdoor to steal something important. But when he opened the music box, it woke Willard up in a fight ensued. In the Francus, Ash stabbed Willard and attempted to frame an escaped convict. So there we go. That was the final level from the demo. Now I'm on my own. What in the blazes is this? Good morning, innkeeper. I heard a man was murdered here a week ago. Hey, I a deranged convict did him in. Now bugger off. Tell me more about the evening when Willard Wright died. I will make it worth your while. Is that supposed to be me? Or maybe it's someone from the Brotherhood. How interesting. Let's check out the intoxicating dinner party. I've got a cool 36 clues to go find. Well, let it begin. These sure are fine coats. Yes, young child. With the cigar. Little Pip. Run to the city and grab me some Ash Blair tobacco and a bottle of gin. I'll pay you when I'm back, David. So this is Little Pip. Boom. Looking at the coats. Pocket is what I grabbed. There's an overcoat and a hat. It's blue. A green coat and a hat. Oh, here I have more cigars. Oh, he was going in. He grabbed the cigar from this pocket, I believe. Yeah, he went into this pocket. Well, there's also this with notes. Dear Miss Richards, I enjoyed your company tremendously when I visited your father last month. I'm certain you would wish to hear the rest of my thoughts on the shortcomings of our society. I invite you and your father to a dinner at April 8th at my manor. Sincerely, Edmund Cloudsley. That's right. How can I forget the Cloudsley name? And then, Dear Mary, here is something for your diary from me. For you, I would fight a tiger and win from Peter Batley. All the rich folk want her. How about this? Statue has, what is this? A syringe with some liquid left in it. That is a hell of a hiding spot for a syringe. So I can go to the possibly dining hall. No, it's just the main living quarters. A uh, lot to take in. Thank you, dear. Wait, hold on. This is the second part of the dialogue. Of course, I can give you some candles for your room, Lucia. I assume you are itching to continue reading that scandalous novel. It's key and a note. Dear Ada, I have to use this letter to share some good news. There is no substance to the claim that your late husband used his position to squander church money. The judge has decided to remove all accusations, and you will be no longer a target of baseless gossip. I truly and sincerely hope this will provide some dark, some comfort in these dark times when ignorance and impudence go hand in hand. May our Lord steward over our poor souls. So really quick, this one's Ada. This one's Lucia. I don't know what the hell this is to the right. I don't even remember touching it. Then you said, thank you, dear. No, I threw it out. I do not read such dirty literature anymore. I do hope our master's guests are satisfied and that Brian served everything as instructed. Interesting key. Maybe I'm supposed to remember the notches on it. This is a simple key. The dinner party will take place on April 8th. Everything should be ready before noon. Prepare roasted boar. Young Ms. Richards appears not to enjoy meat. Therefore, prepare some alternative side dish. Well, let's keep looking through the kitchen. To Mrs. Smith for three years of service. Who's to say which one is Mrs. Smith? Mrs. Smith needs two eggs and a pot of tea each breakfast. No heavy food for dinner. You're responsible for Lil Pip doing all his errands. Mr. Walker, I am woken. I am to be woken up and dressed at 7 a.m. I expect to read my daily newspaper by noon. Mrs. Baker, I expect all my rooms to be cleaned every day, twice on the days I have visitors. And note, David Gorin's job requires that he may arrive or leave during night. No complaining about this. So he's the coachman for Edmund Clownsley. I remember that. What about this? Well, here I've got some wine and brandy. Full and sealed bottles with red liquid labeled wine. Full and sealed bottle with amber liquid labeled brandy. What about this door? Well, there's another lock with lots of food inside, loaves of bread, some lemons, vegetables, and meat. So it's all prepared for the dinner party. Has the dinner party not happened yet? Door to the outside not locked. Okay, let me check this attic real quick. There's a mattress with a ton of clues on it. Monkey Man, Dark Hand, what? How are those clues? Monkey Man 2, this looks like the making of a key, or maybe a lock pick. There's Amber Liquid. So whiskey, probably. A forged key. A couple of pennies, a fancy handkerchief, and a shiny pocket watch. 
I remember the handkerchief is similar to Edmund Cloudsley's handkerchief, but it's all hidden in a mattress. It's a giant seed. There's a locked door. There's a drawer here with candles. A diary on April 7th. Oh, so the dinner party hasn't even happened yet. This has been an ordinary day, mostly spent in preparation for tomorrow's dinner event. I do believe the time has come for me to ask for a raise in salary after all these years I've loyally worked here. It's a difficult conversation to be had, but I will strengthen my will and talk to Master about it tomorrow. There's also the wise slave. So this is a servant who wants a raise. Only one pound of two shillings and ink to write that note. There's also a drawer down here with print paint and down with parasites. Too long? Have they feasted on our blood and sweat? Possibly referring to the Lord, such as Edmund Cloudsley. There's another locked door, probably for the other servant. With a ton of lockpicks. Ash Blair tobacco. A dagger. A pistol. Oh, and David. So this is David's room. So he also cleans up the bar. Interesting. There's also got a sack of money hanging out here. Bag with more forged keys right outside David's room. I feel like I'm supposed to mark who lives in each room. So there's, what, four stories here? One of the servants lives here. This one's got to be David, Gorin, and then this could be anyone. I mean, whoever is here has just been stealing stuff. Let's go check upstairs. Oh, there's a ton more going on here. This one is huge. How about this room? We got pink sauce, partially empty. Could be a poison. Once your target has ingested the love potion, establish eye contact and hold it as long as possible. In most cases, the effects will be felt within two days, depending on your own appearances. Ah, yes. They will love you as long as you're not fugly. And then in here, I've got four shillings. I will not change the rule that the staff member who has worked here the longest gets the bottom room. Do not bother me with such nonsense again. So the only length of someone working here that we know of is three years and they have a commemorative thing nobody else has one of those but that we could stumble on one of those i think that was smith so it could be smith who is the longest on here the laceless count the bes besmirched lover of lusitania oh is this the smut is that what this is so the c has been reading smut and i'm gonna put ada at this lowest room or no it's it's smith we don't know actually Oh, well, that means Lucia isn't Smith. So it's likely Ada Smith and Lucia something else. Likely. Unless if there's another female servant. In that case, I'd have to go back on it. Locked door. And what about this top room with the locked door? Remember to take the fourth one from every row. Huh? Candles. Ink pot. Money. Oh! And then the rope is tied here, which leads down to the bag of money. So the bag of money belongs to whoever has this room. Let's explore a bit over here. Uh, there's a book. More books with secret codes. Such trivial ciphers as reading only the first word of every line are easy to produce on short notice, but extremely unsafe and easy to decode. Consider this simple example. Money has changed hands. Does that have something to do with this? Fourth one from every row. One meaning word? Well, that's probably just telling me there are secret codes. There's a safe with a note. Due to the sensitivity of your stomach, I advise abstaining from alcohol for the next month. Also consider a glass of peptic tonic before eating to avoid upsetting your digestive system. Here's the peptic tonic, cloudy liquid, and opium. Yeah, they did medicine differently back then. So someone's an alcoholic and is uh, coping with opium. There's another safe with the golden idol. Look who's back. And some money, of course. I've got a ton of notes here. Dear Edmund, this cannot continue. Since my return and move to Sebastian's Manor, he has asked for financial support seven times. He clearly is unable to take any monetary responsibility. Please, I need your help, my dear brother. Sincerely, Rose Cubert. And what's up with this uh, ham tree attached to a rope, huh? There's a lot to take in. Oh! Ooh, Mrs. Baker's starting date in 1787. So she's, Mrs. Baker's only been working here for like a few months, a little over half a year. And then dear Edmund, I liked your idea. Let's send him to colonies where his violent nature will make him feel at home. I hear you're having dinner with Lady Mary and her well-to-do father Lothar. Peter and I were to join you. We could beguile him with tales of adventures in the colonies so we can ship him away. Hmm. There's a waste bucket with a ton. Well, well, Edmund. 
You seem pretty pleased after the old boy passed away and a spot freed up for you in the House of Lords. Take care of those with whom you ally. I have many friends and will deal with you swiftly if you dare cross me. Lord George Bridges. The revolution will come for the likes of you, you crooked bastard. Soon you will pay for your sins against honest common folk with your blood. Final Vanguard. So that's probably who was ever in the bottom right. So there's also a star attached to this letter. A red star. Cloudsley. Once more, you have failed to answer our requisition. This is the last warning you will receive. Your transgressions against us demand amends. Your only course of action you have is to surrender yourself to our justice. Last chance for repentance, Serpent, or we will unleash one of our stewards upon you. The Brotherhood of Masks. Oh god, is Edmund Cloudsley gonna die now? Dear Uncle, I hear you are interested in Lady Richards. I think you are too old for her. I shall court her instead. Secondly, please lend me 300 pounds. It is small change to you when I am desperately in need of it at present. Truly yours, Peter Batley. Oh, so this is the Batley sigil. I guess this is the Brotherhood one. And this is the Vanguard one, red stamp. Same goes with bottle room. So now, finally, I imagine the last room is this room where the actual death happened. Good Lord, this took forever. So first off, we have a familiar face here. I believe this is Edmund Cloudsley. Ah, yes. It's poison. Nobody touch a thing and nobody move. I'll send for a doctor right away. Got a blue key and a heart key. There is the lady with the pink dress who is very likely Mary Richards. This is horrible. Yeah, she's got a matching dress and coat. Oh, Mary Richards. And there's this man. She does seem rather unwell. It's extremely upsetting. Well, he could be anybody, but obviously someone written about. She is not breathing and her face is blotched. A fan, four pounds, and rings with various gemstones. Yeah, I recognize her from the previous, or not the previous, but like two cases ago. Is that Rose Cubert? So she's been poisoned. At the dinner party, Rose Cubert ingested the poison and died. There's also this man. You killed my aunt, you devil. I shall execute you on the spot. Oh, this is Peter Batley. I remember you. Pack of cards and a fork. And he's accusing... Oh, Lord, this has nothing to do with me. He's accusing this man. Note this self. If you get frustrated when working, remember the tale about the rich lord who married his donkey and you will feel better. Ensure that the beautiful lady sits next to me during dinner. I will slip you a shilling from Peter. And then we got some keys. These are the same keys as Edmund's. This is likely Brian. That would make sense anyway. This guy, we don't know who he is. He's probably Lothar. Yes, Mary and her father Lothar. So that's Lothar Richards. So then behind here, we have got water, wine, lemonade, and peptic tonic. And that's all the clues. Also have the meal. Ah, so I gotta figure out where people were sitting. Someone had the roast, wine, and brandy. Someone had salad, lemonade. Someone had an untouched salad, cloudy liquid, untouched, and clear liquid. And then cloudy liquid, red liquid, roast, red liquid, salad, cigar. Oh boy, and then take me downstairs, I've been here before. Right, that's a lot to take in. Now I've got to get to clue solving. If, if, if I can at least get all the people, that would be perfect. And Brian, Brian what? Walker, I guess? Brian Walker? It's the only one that lines up. Then Lucia Baker makes the most sense. And let's hope I got this. Two or fewer slots are incorrect. You hate to see it. Well, Baker's the cleaner. So she's the cleaner. She's the cook. So Smith is the cook. So do I have Lucia and Ada backwards? I do have that backwards. That means I gotta go back on my thoughts about the rooms, but at least I got these people right. I'm pretty sure this is Brian. Yeah, because, I mean, he's got the same thoughts as these books suggests, and it's likely he's been here a while, so Brian Walker. And then let me check these two rooms again. Remember to take the fourth from every row. I'm curious about that clue. So this is likely Lucia Smith, and then Ada Baker, and then... What the hell is this room? Little Pip? I mean, I guess it could make sense. Yeah, that makes the most sense. So then there's people at the dinner party. So I've got to figure out, I think through the kitchen, who eats what. Ms. Richards does not enjoy meat. Unfortunately, there are three dishes without meat. There's also only one person that's been poisoned. And the poison is also a drink, so the thing that's been poisoned is either the lemonade or this amber. 
Eh, but I can't know just yet until I know who had what. And one of these three is Ms. Richards. She could have had lemonade or cloudy liquid and clear liquid. Lemonade makes the most sense for her. Although what the hell is the clear liquid again? It's in here, isn't it? So peptic tonic is the cloudy liquid. Opium looks like clear liquid. And actually, I don't even know. This is Edmund Cloudsley's place, right? Yeah, this is Edmund Cloudsley's place. So he probably owns this safe with the blue lock, I should mention. And he is a blue key and he is a blue key. Clear li liquid is probably water, come to think. So this is probably Edmund's. So he's got the Pepto Bismol or whatever and water because he's non-alcoholic and he's at the head of the table. So that makes the most sense, especially in his own home. And he's got a note uh, from Peter asking the lady to sit next to him and he'll slip him a shilling, but there's no shilling on him. So he probably didn't ensure that the lady's next to Peter. So I think it would make a lot of sense that Mary Richards is the vegetarian next to Edmund. And then the other people are Rose, Peter, and Lothar. Well, Peter's holding his fork. Are any of these missing a fork? Oh yes, this top left one is missing a fork. So this is Peter. Well, Mary is right in between them then. I don't know what to make of it. Yeah, Mary could be either. Oh, uh, but probably not the cigar one. Does anyone seem like they've been smoking? I mean, it could be her father. Did they mention anything about her father being in the cigars? He's well-to-do. He's a violent nature. I could see him being a cigar smoker. So that would make a lot of sense with Lothar being here. Oh, and actually this being Rose makes a lot of sense because her and Edmund both have the Pepto, but hers is half drank. Edmund hasn't touched his. And there's like a lot of notes about how maybe uh, people want Edmund dead. Two groups of people want Edmund dead. So probably one got to him through his Pepto, but he didn't drink it. Rose drank it and she died. And that is correct. So someone poisoned. I got to figure out exactly what it's called. Is it the tonic? Peptic tonic. Why, why did I call it Pepto Bismol? So the tonic was poisoned and then the key was hidden, but they wanted Edmund dead. Someone wanted him dead. The final Vanguard or the Brotherhood of Masks. I mean, I could put this here. Vinyl, Final Vanguard wanted Edmund Cloudsley dead, and then someone poisoned the tonic and hit the key. I mean, this is where the tonic is. It's the blue key, so it's very likely him having something to do with it, and he's just bluffing. Are the keys exactly the same? Uh, I think so. Also, the syringe being put in here leads me to believe that it's very likely the servant to put it here. So, Brian Walker poisoned the tonic and hid the necessary key in, in a pocket, I guess. This is just wrong. Oh, it's not a coat pocket. That's what this pocket referred to. Hold on, let's get rid of the ones I don't know for sure. I think it's this. Brian doing the poisoning makes a lot of sense. I think the idea is this, blue lock, look at the blue key. This is the blue key. I should look for forged blue keys that appear similar to this, or non-blue keys rather, just forged keys that are similar to this. Ah, the key's in the bag. Well, hold up then. The key's in the bag, and whose room is at the top? That's Ada Baker's room that's attached to. So it has to have been Ada Baker who poisoned the tonic. How did she even get access to this? I don't know, but I still think it's Final Vanguard who wanted him dead. Well, at least we're getting closer. All right, it, the key has to be in this note. Fourth one from every row. That can surely only refer to a letter. Well, let's look at this. Use substance to remove target sincerely dark hand. Dark hand steward. That's the key. That's the catch. Wow. Dark hand steward wanted Edmund Clausley dead. And she did it because she was basically given by a bribe. So she received encoded instructions from Dark Hand Steward, whoever that is, to poison Edmund Clownsley. She used her ability to move freely throughout the rooms while cleaning and made a copy of the key to the medicine cabinet. She used the syringe to poison the sealed peptic tonic bottle. However, during the party, Rose asked for tonic and drank it first and dr died from the poison. It's all come together. Beautiful detective work. I mean, how fun is that? 